Hello everybody and welcome to Really Good Vlogs. So the reason I'm turning the camera on right now is because something pretty epic happened to me today. I got a big surprise off my family. Now, first of all, before I tell you what that surprise was, I'm going to basically give you an update on my health. So it's been a week since I've been home, it's Thursday, well nearly a week, six days, it's Thursday now. I came out to hospital last Friday and it's been okay. I had the operation on the Monday, obviously the amputation and the lymph gland removal. And on during the operation I had two drains as you've seen on the uh, video where it was high off, high off drugs, high off uh, pain medication. Um, I had two drains in my under my arm, going up to my armpit to drain all the excess fluid from the lymph glands, um, and they were removed pretty quickly. Actually, on the Wednesday, my surgeon said sometimes they be, they can be in for a week plus, uh, near, near enough two weeks, um, but that tends to be on bigger people. I'm quite petite, so luckily there wasn't a lot of liquid to drain off, um, so they got removed on the Wednesday. And on the Friday, my surgeon looked at my stump, changed the bandage, and she would said basically that as long as I want to go, home, I wanted to go home, and my pain was okay, then I was free to go. I was free to be discharged. Um, and first part of the week, my pain was really bad, um, but by the Wednesday and Thursday, it was clear enough. So I felt like I was ready to go home, and. Um, the pain medication I was on in hospital is pain medication I could have at home anyway, so there was no point laying in a hospital bed and being bored out my brains. So I thought I'll come home um, and my mum, the stump actually is pretty easy to bandage, so my mum's mom, my helping me with that, she's doing that, uh, it's all good. Um, the, the sore area is actually the, the left hand side of my body where the drains were and where they made the incision to go into the armpit to make the to get the lymph glands. Um, usually on a on a regular person without my condition it would just be like a small incision um, and they just go off, get the lymph glands and you know stitch it back up or whatever. And yet, technically, it's the same operation as what I had. However, my skin, where the incision took place, is very delicate anyway, even without an incision, even without someone cutting into your body. So um, the, it was wounded there anyway. So as you can imagine, it's just made that tissue worse and more wounded and more yucky and more sore. So that's actually causing me quite a bit of discomfort. Not 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 necessarily pain but more discomfort. It's really painful when I do my bandages and it's extremely tender. However, the discomfort is like the tightness from um like when I lean that way it's 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 sort of really sorry, just fix myself. Sorry I've got for those of you who don't well me know me well enough, I have extreme O C D. So even before I come on this camera, it takes me like 10 minutes to make sure I look okay. And I'm still not happy with how I look, but um, I can't spend any longer than t longer than 10 minutes looking in the mirror to make sure uh, my jacket's on okay, my hair's okay, my hat's on okay, etc. So that's why I come on camera appearing like this. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so why am I rambling on about my OCD? Anyway, it's an interesting fact, isn't it? Something you don't know about James. Now you do. He got OCD. Self-diagnosed OCD. I haven't been, like, officially diagnosed OCD, but I believe that's what it is, and that's what everyone says I've got. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, it can be one of three things, really, or a mixture of everything. It could be tight because of the stitches, um, down the side it could be because of the liquid there's liquid still in in the like that hasn't been drained properly so there might be a build up of liquid or it could be from swelling uh, because when you take the bandage off there is like 
on the side, not on the arm of the just under, it must be where they've sort of cut into. It is swollen and it is, it, it is like a, sort of like a sack of, it does feel like a sack of liquid kind of. Um, I don't know if it's a bit harder than just liquid, I'm not sure, but it, it's swollen anyway, it, you can notice it, it, it's swollen, so it's very tight and taut, sore and tender. But um, yeah, that's about it in terms of recovery. My doctors were, I think they had an idea that I'd recover quite quick because just of, after previous operations, I've been quick to get out of hospital. But I think they were, I think they, they, they didn't realise that I'd be up and out within five days of having an amputation. They were utterly shocked and um, they're still laughing when I talk to them on the phone and when I email them and how, how, how quickly I I recover from things. So now it's just a waiting game to see um, of how much of the cancer they've removed. Um, fingers crossed it's good. Um, yeah, and then I'll go once we get funding for this. Um, we're just, so the Fight TV campaign, what I've been doing. Um, Rig Assertive still isn't at a stage where we can go into clinical trials yet. It's going to be in the next three to six months. Um, so if if it was at that stage, I'd most probably go on to that trial because it's a drug, obviously, to stop cancer from spreading, to slow it down, etc. But because it's not at the stage where we can go into clinical trials, we've still got a few more months until we get there. Um, it uh, they they've been looking for other drugs to put me on, uh, because this cancer did no 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 two ways about it. It spread pretty quickly. You know, it went from having cancer removed to being all clear to a few le weeks later, the same growth and tumors coming back on my hand. Um, to a few weeks later, it spread into my lymph glands. Um, so it spread quickly. So they want to put me on some sort of um, cancer treatment in order to stop it spreading even more and to keep it at bay. Um, yeah, so to keep me healthy, basically. Um, so we're looking at getting funding for it, a drug that I'd have locally uh, every three weeks in a local hospital, like an infusion. Um, so I'll be on a drip basically like the way people have chemotherapy. I don't know if it's a type of chemotherapy or what I think it is, but it's not as harsh as most chemotherapies because as I say, they don't work in EV. And um, so, and I think it's, it's the drug that's on the market that's had the most promising results in people with EV at stopping the, slowing the cancer down and stopping it from spreading. So I'll be going on that pretty soon in the next month or so. Fingers crossed, providing we can get the funding. And um, and it's not it's not a matter of like I I said to them I said well, can't I just go out and if if you're talking about funding and it's going to delay things, can't I just go out and buy this drug privately because you know I can do that. I've got I've got I've got the money to be able to have saved up, I've got a savings account. Well, firstly, my mum and dad have got obviously money to help me out, but I've got a savings account that I've had since a baby for, um, and from various charity events I've done, um, various money that people have raised for me, not not for Deborah, but for me, myself. And I've, I've always put that, away. yeah, some of it I've spent on holidays and had a really good time with, but I've always put a lot of it away just to, just to save for a rainy day, really, and things like this, if if things like this come out where I do need to a, a big a big sum of money for something. I, I, I mean, when I say a big sum of money, it's not, it's not... <laughs> hundreds of thousands it's it's not not that at all but it's it's just savings that um would I either one day go on a huge epic holiday for us all or one day be spent on something that i need such as medical equipment or 
um, treatment, basically money for money that's being saved for a rainy day. So I, I told them this, and we we said, you know, we've got the money to put towards treatment if funding's the concern. And he said, no, what 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 we mean by funding is your local authorities have to fund the drug and you can't just go to a doctor and say a private doctor and say i've got the money you know here's the money give me the drug type of thing it's not about the money it's about filling in the paperwork doing all the um the procedure health and safety stuff getting getting the money um from your local authority getting the okay from the nhs it's the whole procedure that goes along with it basically what i was told is it's not where health is concerned it's not all about money you can't just pay for uh, medication that isn't available on the nhs or medication that uh, you need that now and then rather than having it when the funding comes or when the paperwork's being filled in you can't bypass the paperwork it still needs to be a procedure so um, the procedure is applying to the local authorities getting them to okay it and say that yeah they'll take my treatment on board they'll administer my cancer treatment and um, they'll sort it all out and then once we've got all that paperwork done or my say me i haven't done any of it it's all my specialists in london that are doing all this once they've got all that out of the way they will then um, put in a plan to book me in for my regular appointments every three weeks so that's what we're waiting for so we're just hoping it's going to be sooner rather than later because obviously it's quite important for my health so yeah so results of the to see what where, whether you've got all the cancer out or not uh, where it's spread to if it's spread we'll, we'll, yeah, i shouldn't say that i'm drinking myself i, I I, I'm fighting and I'm hoping for great results and I do think they've got they've basically you can see they've cut a lot of the arm off so I think my arm's safe in terms of uh, the tumours they've cut off up from my arm but I'm just hoping that lymph, the lymph glands have, have su successfully been removed and there isn't more in there that they need to go in and remove so yeah once we get that out of the way um, that's it in terms of health that's all I can update you on but yeah so the surprise as you can tell or you most probably can't tell because it's just a brick wall behind me but I'm not at home I'm actually in Anglesey so this morning I woke up and I thought you know what I'm going to the dentist at 12 o'clock I thought because um my mum last night said that she had a letter through the day before saying um, I had a dentist appointment on Thursday, which is today. So I thought, okay, I've got the dentist, I'll have to be up early. Um, it, it, the dentist was at 12 o'clock, the supposed appointment, but I thought I've got to um, be up early to sort my bandages out and that. So I got off about 8 o'clock. Normal day, went to plan, done my bandages, some of my bandages, got ready to go. Um, yeah, go into the car, my auntie comes out and she's like, oh, I'm coming with you, you know, she, and she's all dressed up in this lovely, lovely, as I say, lovely coat and um, a makeup on, etc, etc. And then, um, yeah, just looking like she wasn't just going to town, looking like she was dressed up for some sort of reason next minute um i knew i knew my dad came home from work early so i knew he was in the house somewhere but he actually came from so out of the blue from somewhere like around the back of me or something shoved his phone his iphone in my face and started recording and basically told me that i was going to a secret location in some some sort of place for a break away so yeah um they surprised me because of what i've been through for um to a weekend away so i didn't know where i was going we just got in the car yes yeah, so the next minute sorry after that after he'd filmed me um my auntie starts like whistling and waving people on so i thought who's she waving next minute my my sister 
Paul's her car around the corner. I couldn't see it. It was like behind one of the other houses. So she pulls her car around the corner and her, my brother-in-law and my nephew, little Tommy, get out with their cases and start help packing the car. So yeah, a, a trip to a regular mundane trip to the dentist turned out to be a trip to Wales, to Anglesey. And we're in a lovely converted stables. It's it's really big. It's it's like really, really big. Um because it's a stable block and it's all like it, it looks like one part of it's a stable block and the other's like two cottages but they've all been knocked into one so it's like a big U shape. It's a really big house. Um, but it's all on different levels so my dad's like brought ramps we've got a home made some makeshift ramps just so I can get round far to the house but it's all fun that adds to the adventure um, and yeah we just got here today we haven't really been out we just cooked a my brother-in-law cooked a lasagna um, and we had we had a nice meal uh, it's pretty cold today so and we got we never got here at all like two o'clock this afternoon so we thought we'll just sit in and have, have a nice dinner have some family time so yeah that's what we're doing and this weekend god knows what in store uh, god knows what's in store um i think we're just going to explore anglesey a bit anglesey is a lovely place lots of villages along the coast i know it's the winter but you still go for drives go to country pubs go to museums go you know go to different coves along the coast it, it'll be it'll be really good fun so that's what we're gonna do but yeah it was a big shock and instead of babbling on and boring you to death let's get a, a video of the moment they surpri surprised me um, up on your screen right now so yeah take a look Why well, we've got to load up. A load up what? The car. Why? Because we're going somewhere. No, we're not. Where? Where? We're going on a uh, se secret getaway. Where? Right. Where? <laughs> I'm not selling you until we get there. <laughs> find out until you get there. No I can't now. Yeah. Oh, so that was the video of when <laughs> they surprised me um, today, this morning. As you can see, I was pretty dumbfounded. And at, at first, I think, as you can see in the video, I, I didn't know what my dad was saying. I was like, why is he putting a camera and iPhone in my face? I, like I didn't get what he was saying, he never actually said to me, we're going away, he sort of said it in other words, so <laughs> it took a while for me to click on as as to we were going away somewhere, but um, as you can see, I was pretty surprised, my little squeaky scream voice, so I hate my voice, that's why I never watch any of these vlogs back, because I hate my voice, um, so yeah guys, I've, I've bored you for long enough, but Hopefully I'm going to do other videos this weekend of um, our time away and bring you along with us. So as always guys, stay happy and keep smiling.